Welcome again everybody and thank you again for joining our global webinar day on It's Good to be Number One, a view on Infosim Stablenet based on criteria and results of the EMA radar for ENAMS. My name is Dietmar Kneidel, Director of Sales Europe with Infosim and uh, I'll be your moderator for today's event. Joining us from our office in Austin, Texas is John Olson, VP Technical Services Americas at InfoSim. Good morning, John. Good morning, Dimar. And also joining us from the same office in Austin is my sales colleague and regional manager, Paul Kuczynski. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Dietmar. So these two gentlemen will guide us through our presentation today. Paul, I trust you have uh, overcome your technical difficulties in terms of sound and, and headset? I believe so, Dimar. I think we're good to go this morning. Okay. Well, just be warned. If you, if you uh, cause any trouble, I'll, I'll just mute you. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before I hand over to uh, John and Paul, just wanted today's audience to know that all of you are automatically muted just to keep down the background noise. So in order for us to answer any of your questions, you need to type them in the questions window at the bottom of the GoToMeeting application. We will be answering all questions uh, either directly in the chat or uh, if they are for uh, well, interest for, for everybody, for the whole audience, then we might uh, throw them in in our Q&A session at the end of our presentation. Also, please note that this event is being recorded and all registrants will be notified through an email tomorrow on how to access that recording. Well, I guess that's all from my side, so I'd like to go ahead and turn things over to our presenters. I think, John, you're the one to start, right? Sure, Dimar. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll take it away. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining the uh, webinar this morning. Uh, we hope it's really informative for you. It should take about 45 minutes or so. Uh, we're going to be taking you through a sort of a deep dive into the results of this EMA radar report for ENAMS, Enterprise Network Availability Monitoring Systems, which is quite an acronym even for uh, an industry that loves acronyms. It's basically network management systems. Uh, it was done very recently. It's hot off the presses, uh, Q3 of 2014, and we're really excited to share the results with you. So let's get started. Take it away, Paul. All right. Thank you, John. So before we jump into the actual uh, EMA radar report, we'll just uh, go through a couple slides here about InfoSim, just a really high level. Uh, so InfoSim is a leading manufacturer of automated service fulfillment and service assur assur assurance solutions for large telcos, uh, system integrators, MSPs, and enterprise and global class corporations. And uh, we may not be a household name to a lot of folks, but we've actually been around since 2003, so about 11 years or so. And we have been developing and marketing StableNet, and we've been doing so through the same core team of developers and founders. So we have a solution that offers fault performance, configuration, and discovery um, all through one platform. And we'll go into a little more detail on the specifics and the technical functionalities of the platform here in a little bit. But uh, InfoSim is privately held. Uh, our main office is in Würzburg, Germany. That's where Dietmar is right now. John and I are here in Austin, Texas in the U.S. Uh, regional office. And then we also have offices in Singapore and the U.K. as well. So solution strength. So a little bit, uh, little bit of insight into the StableNet solution itself. I'll just briefly go over these. We'll get into a little more detail later on the slide deck on each of these specific points. But uh, StableNet is a comprehensive solution for discovery, configuration, performance, and fault management. And one of the unique differentiators of the StableNet platform is it is a unified code base. And uh, it's all built on one, one platform, so to speak. So all of your uh, fault and performance management um, and your integration can be done through one platform or workflow, so it's kind of nice. Um, ultra scalable, uh, the larger the deployment, the better our software does. 
And uh, since it is a completely unified solution, um, we can deliver end-to-end -end awareness and we can identify root cause um, uh, specific problems or critical issues very quickly. And we offer automated benefits uh, relatively quick so we can pretty much automate all your tasks across the network, all disciplines. And we're able to do this and deliver ROI or return on investment in a matter of months, not years. All right, so we're going into the actual radar report itself here. And like John had mentioned before, there is a number of acronyms there, and uh, we'll just let that be for the moment. <laughs> Don't need to go back through those again. But a little about EMA. Um, who is EMA? Well, they were founded in 1996, and EMA stands for Enterprise Management Associates. And they're one of the leading industry analysts that provide deep insight across the full spectrum of IT and data management technologies. And EMA leverages a combination of practical experience, insight, best practices, and in-depth deep knowledge of uh, current and planned vendor solutions to help EMA's clients uh, achieve their goals. And if you get a chance, you can go there and navigate to the link and learn a little bit more about specifically what EMA does. Now, this specific study um, was to review and compare monitoring solutions that have been specifically designed um, for medium and large enterprise settings. So all the solutions in this, uh, or vendors in this report, were required to meet the following minimum criteria. Um, the ability to support uh, and manage components and elements from a multiple network uh, equipment manufacturers, availability for network management teams and managed service providers, or MSPs, and verifiably deployed and successfully managed networks of at least 500 devices or more. So what are the criteria in this study? Well, there's actually five of them. So you have functionality, deployment and administration, cost advantage, vendor strength and architecture and integration. And in this particular uh, representation, uh, those five points are arranged in a pentagon, uh, five shape here, or five sided shape rather. Um, they're based out of 100 points. And if we look at the ideal vendor, obviously it's out of 100, um, but the average of all the scores uh, represents that shape in the middle, which is highlighted in green. And that kind of just gives you a brief overview of the next criteria fields that we're going to go into. But before we do that, uh, what vendors were covered in this study? Well, if you look at the list here, it's a lot of the usual suspects, some pretty big names. And we're kind of proud to be at the very top here um, and you know, in amongst some very well-known vendors. All right, so moving on here to the actual report itself. So if we could take one slide here that was representative of our entire presentation, this would probably be the best slide to do so. So along the two axes here, we have deployment cost efficiency. There we go. Thanks, John. And then also solution impact. And you can see uh, we score actually the highest of all 17 of the vendors that participated um, in the survey. I think HP has a little bit of a larger circle but that's representative of their vendor strength and the size of the company. And we'll go into a little more detail on that as well in the next few slides. All right, so we'll go into the actual fields that uh, were used as criteria in the study, or in the report rather. Uh, the first one and the one that we scored the highest on is functionality. And in this particular field, um, we're looking at discovery, alarm slash reporting, fault uh, isolation slash troubleshooting, or MTTR, mean time to repair, inventory and asset management, and also cloud. So under functionality, um, EMA stated the following. Uh, StableNet led the entire ENAMS field in scoring for features slash functionality. Key strengths were around uh, areas of discovery features, range of non-working net uh, network devices that can be discovered and managed, and alarm management slash correlation. So reports are highly customizable. And we have a full set of inventory and asset managed capabilities. So we're actually able to uh, create asset tags and generate asset reports on top of that. So our response to that is uh, that StableNet is a single solution, one platform that automates um, asset management, performance management, or performance monitoring and fault alerting 
uh, into large complex networks, and we've done so for a number of years and been extremely successful in doing so. Um, so we have a broad range of features across the entire platform, from discovery all the way to alerting, that allow um, everything to work together and provide a seamless IT management solution through one GUI. So it's through one pane of glass, and uh, since it's one, it's one code based. It's one workflow. It's a very unique solution um, in, in the industry right now. No bolt-on, no software by acquisition. It's just truly one solution. And I think, John, you have a specific example here that you can go into more detail on. I do, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, um, and I, just before I go into that, I, I'd probably like to say that one of the major reasons that we came out uh, so well in the study at the very top was because of how well we did in this particular category. We did really well in every category, but we led the entire field in scoring for functionality, which really is probably the most important one, right? It's about what features do you have, what can your product do, how well does it do those things. Um, not only how well do you say that you do them, but how well do your customers say that, that it works for them. And, and when their analysts actually use the product and view the product, uh, what do they think of it? So we're, we're really proud of the fact that, that in the functionality category we came out on top. And I think that probably uh, is representative of, uh, of the way our customers use our product. Uh, we have a lot of features. We have a lot of capabilities. Not everybody uses them all, but everybody can use uh, not only just one, but, but many of the features that we have, including uh, our example we're using for this slide, which is a large global car manufacturer, a uh, German car manufacturer, but it's certainly a very well-known global brand. You'll probably see their logo in the, the last slide when we, we show our customers. Uh, in their case, over a period of time, they went from using uh, seven network management tools down to three. Uh, they had, uh, when we first started with them, a large number of sort of point solutions, uh, different things that, that uh, different products that each did their own sort of individual, uh, but of course that's not the best way to do it, right? It's, it's complex. You have to, you have to deal with seven different vendors. You have to deal with seven different uh, maintenance schedules. You have to deal with training of seven products. Uh, you have to figure out if there's a problem, which product do I use to solve that or figure out what's going on here, right? So obviously the more that you can do in one tool, especially in a very large, complex organization, the better you are. Uh, as we stand today, they're, they're down to three tools, and it's really StableNet and two other tools that are very specific for the, for the manufacturing industry, right? So there's always going to be a few things that we don't necessarily cover or that are really uh, unique to an industry or unique to an organization, uh, and that's, that's fine. The idea is if you can consolidate some of the others, you get a, a huge return on investment. In this case, nine months, which is, you know, just a, if you walk into uh, any organization and say that you're going to get an ROI in nine months, they're usually pretty excited about that. Um, uh, and the reason that we can offer that is is really broken down here in this next slide, which is kind of the three pillars or three modules, if you will, uh, that are contained within StableNet. StableNet is a is a singular product, but it does have different feature sets, and and those can be broken down. I think um, just from an understanding standpoint, into these three: configuration, fault, and performance monitoring. They all play well together. They're all interrelated, but they do sort of, uh, from again, from an understanding standpoint, I think it's easy to break them down this way. Uh, we always begin with configuration uh, management, which is really asset management as well. So it's it's a discovery of the devices that you wish to manage, whether those are switches, routers, servers, firewalls, access points, uh, or something even really unique. And we'll talk later about point of sale terminals that we're doing uh, for a, a global retailers. Uh, yeah, we onboard those devices. We get a detailed asset inventory of them. We can make topology diagrams and, and deep asset uh, inventory information available. We automatically discover dependencies amongst those devices, uh, which is really important as we talk about fault uh, alerting later. Uh, and we, uh, uh, we can take backups of the configurations of those devices. We can push configurations of those devices. We can do policy checking, which is really a critical piece, especially in today's uh, day and age. Uh, those policy checks mostly are related 
uh, or used in the compliance area. So whether you have uh, banking regulations or healthcare regulations or whatever uh, internal compliance policies you have, uh, you can use StableNet to check your, your devices against those policies. You can do that every day if you need to and make sure that anything new or anything that's been changed uh, still meets those compliance uh, uh, regulations. Uh, we can do vulnerability checking and lifecycle management all within the configuration or NCCM module. And it's, uh, it's definitely one of the, the highlights of our, of our product. Uh, However, we also handle the traditional performance and fault monitoring. So get me the KPIs. Tell me if something is up or down. Tell me how it's performing. Uh, and we do that across a number of different criteria using uh, a large variety of technologies. So some of the, the traditional things, SNMP and NetFlow and collecting traps and syslogs, or using IPSLA, whether it's, whether it's active testing, whether it's passive collection of data, uh, we can handle it. We do. Uh, we have the ability to do things like um, end-user experience uh, testing through synthetic transactions. So go hit a website, let's say, or a web application, and uh, perform an action and, and test the results, or tell me what the results are of that. And I can do that uh, from a variety of locations and compare and contrast the results. It's it's uh, important in today's sort of application-driven uh, world. We can take those statistics, we make them available to you in reports or dashboards or what we call service weather maps, which is a really unique way of rolling up the different KPIs that we're getting from all kinds of different systems into a single pane of glass view. Uh, makes it really easy to see what's going on, makes it really easy to drill down and understand why there could be an issue uh, in an area or location or with an application or so on. Uh, all of which is multi-tenant capable, so it's great for service providers. It's also great for organizations that maybe are heavily involved in sort of mergers and acquisitions. They need to integrate another IT department into the to the mothership, so to speak, uh, very quickly because that that company has been acquired. Uh, you can do that, and you can do it uh, with a single installation of StableNet. And then, lastly, on the fault side, we can uh, we're obviously monitoring those KPIs. We can tell if it there's a problem if something down or if something falls below a threshold or above a threshold, depending on how you're looking at it, uh, we can certainly alert an alarm on that. And we can do that uh, using all the things that you would expect, emails, texts, sending traps or logs out to other systems. Uh, we can integrate with third-party trouble ticket systems or service desk systems so uh, you don't have to redesign your entire sort of workflow. Whoever's typically getting tickets today or creating tickets today can still get them, uh, you know, utilizing StableNet. Um, and one of the most important things that we do is, ha is root cause analysis. So um, we understand that if things depend on each other, as they always do in a network, and, uh, and system A goes down and it brings down lots of other systems with it, you want one alert, you want one alarm that says uh, A is the root cause of the problem here, uh, B and C are affected, but you want to go focus your attention on A. And we can do that because of our automated discovery where we, under, we learn the dependencies among systems. So it kind of all plays together in a, in a, in a cycle of, of understanding uh, how things are put together. All of these features and functionality are built into one platform, uh, one code base, and I think is probably the major reason why we scored so highly on the features and functionality uh, aspect of the, uh, of the report. All right, I think I'm up. Great summation there, uh, Majon. It's uh, sometimes you're a hard act to follow. Let's see here, but let's go ahead. Let's go into uh, the second field or criteria uh, on the report, and that's architecture and integration. And under this field, we're looking at platform design, scalability, integration, and interoperability. And according to EMA, um, our StableNet platform scored extremely well and overall all architecture and integration. Um, also, it includes a broad set of capabilities as part of the core product. And uh, this is one of the most SaaS-ready ENAM solutions, which is kind of nice as well. And Infosim StableNet provided a large number of network uh, monitoring deployments that fully demonstrate the ability of the product to scale up. Um, the solution also scored very high in our assessment of integrations. And StableNet provides uh, integrations for multiple third-party systems in each of EMA's categories, which are in bit uh, management platforms, service desk solutions, 
and cloud and virtual system orchestration and CMDB and CMS platforms. So one of the things that we like to tell our customers and a lot of our customers already know is that Stable Net works really well as a manager of managers. Um, it does have and is designed as a three-tiered architecture, which enables flexibility deployments, um, as well as huge scalability. So um, I don't think we've run into uh, a situation or environment that we couldn't scale to actually the more devices, the better StableNet runs. Uh, we can also run on multiple OSs, such as uh, Linux and Windows. And uh, we do easily connect and, and play well with third-party platforms, such as CMDBs or trouble ticket systems. And uh, John, I think you've got some more great examples here, and I'll let you take it away again. Yeah, thanks. I think this particular criteria is really about sort of the guts of the product. How is it designed? How is it built? Uh, is it able to scale to the needs of large corporations or service providers? How well does it integrate into other systems or with other systems? How open is it? Um, because in today's world, you have to be an open system. There just are no... There's no reason to be proprietary anymore. It just doesn't work uh, in an interconnected world. And so, again, I think we, we came out really, uh, we scored really, really well because of our design. Um, and an example of that is uh, a large uh, European telco uh, that has been a customer of ours for a while um, that's actually using us in, in two sort of separate ways. One is connecting back into their inventory system as they bring on new customers and uh, enable new services for existing customers, uh, we have to talk to their inventory system and understand what's, what's new, what's being provisioned or needs to be provisioned, what's coming online you know, tomorrow, uh, because we need to onboard those systems, discover them, and start monitoring them the way that they need to be monitored for their service level or for their location, et cetera, and feed that information back into the CMDB that they're using. And, and, uh, um, we've worked really well with their CMDB, but theirs is not the only one we use uh, or could could use. Uh, a variety of other customers have lots of different CMDBs, and, and we work with all of them. Uh, on the second side of that, or the other side of that coin, uh, we also uh, are being used there to publish performance data to a customer web portal. So on the customer side, when they log in and see their you know, billing information or service information, they also now can get performance uh, analytic data directly published to that portal specific to their connectivity, their locations, their uh, internet pipes, their uh, uh, WAN connections that they're using, etc. Uh, and again, because we're an open platform, we have the capability of, of publishing that data directly to the portal, intermixed with all the other data that they might be getting from other systems, right? So um, again, in, in today's world, it's, it's critical to have an architecture that, that fits those types of solutions, uh, that you can connect to back-end systems, you can be used to publish data to front-end systems, out not only to your own users, but to customers and so forth. And I think uh, this slide that's up there now kind of just shows the architecture. We are a three-tiered architecture, which means uh, we've got sort of various functions uh, split up into different pieces of our product. The, the brains of the operation is our StableNet server, uh, which really coordinates the activity amongst the outside uh, integration layer uh, partners like trouble ticket systems, inventory systems, portals, etc. that I've mentioned, our database which can support either Oracle or MySQL uh, on the smaller size, Oracle on the larger size obviously, and then our agent architecture on the bottom, the real boots on the ground that are doing a lot of the work that I described earlier in the functionality uh, uh, topic. So collecting uh, or doing SNMP polls, pinging, collecting NetFlow, doing the synthetic transactions, uh, collecting syslogs and traps from systems. Those agents do all of that and, and we can scale by just uh, essentially adding more agents. We'll talk about that in a, in a further slide a little bit more detail, but those agents are extremely powerful. You can typically handle many thousands of end devices in a single agent. Um, uh, but you can scale uh, the whole platform by, by just adding additional agents. So uh, having an architecture that's designed this way and has been designed this way from the ground up over the past 11 years, we haven't had to redesign this at all uh, because we sort of always planned on having a modern uh, open platform that can scale, I think really lends itself to working well within our customers. And, and uh, we've got certain 
presentations that are specific to this architecture. If you're interested in learning more, we're, we're happy to share those with you. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, John. And the third point here, or the third field, is going to be cost advantage. And uh, cost advantage is going to include uh, the pricing model, complexity of pricing, and then also the total cost of ownership. And so according to EMA, StableNet finished in the top four overall in EMA's assessment of cost advantage. And the solution's clear edge is in larger deployment uh, environments where its licensing model provides uh, a measurable cost advantage over primary competitors. And here at uh, InfoSim, um, StableNet's ability to consolidate many point solutions, and we've got a great little slide after this to, to show you as an example, um, consolidating those point solutions can drastically uh, reduce OPEX, um, ongoing server and, uh, footprints, maintenance, training, um, support, and uh, the unique pricing model that we have uh, offers a huge advantages when scaling to large networks. Um, the model allows us to scale up or down um, as far as total number of measurements, so you can really customize uh, the StableNet uh, instance in your environment specific to, you know, budget or to, uh, you know, certain issues or critical issues that may come up. Um, so it is right-sized for your environment. And uh, I know we've got a great example here, John. I'll let you uh, kick that off. We do, yeah. I think, obviously, features are great and functionality is wonderful and architecture and all those things, but can I afford it, right? What's the cost? That's obviously always... A, uh, a question that everybody has. Is this something that I can actually purchase and, and use or is this going to break the bank and break the budget? And I think the answer clearly is that this is priced uh, you know, really well in the market. Um, certainly due to the standard size of our customers, again, large enterprises, telcos, this is not a, a cheap and cheerful product, as I like to say. This is not something you purchase on a credit card. Uh, however, when really compared to our competition uh, in this space, uh, we come out really, really well against them. And not only in terms of the top line cost, if you will, how much am I paying for the for the product, but really so much in the bottom line cost as well, that total cost of ownership over a number of years. And, and uh, one of the examples we use is uh, uh, one of the largest banks in Germany. It's been a customer of ours for quite a while, for over three and a half years, uh, and how much they've saved uh, in terms of their, their operating expenses over that time. So the, the slide that's coming up now really shows you from 2011 through currently uh, where they started with us and, and where they are now with us. So in the beginning, sort of when they first implemented StableNet, it was just one piece of the puzzle. Uh, they still were using a number of other products. Um, they sort of dipped their toe in the water, I, I suppose, with StableNet and still kept a lot of these other tools, you know, for NetFlow or for vendor-specific things, for uh, their alerting, uh, et cetera. But over time have really realized that because of our capabilities, they could use StableNet to handle more and more activities within their, their, their uh, IT management systems. They still kept a few of the other ones specific for, you know, individual technologies or places in their network. And as I mentioned earlier, that's okay. That's going to happen. You never take over everything. But just the mere consolidation of a lot of these things down into one product uh, has saved them a total CapEx savings of, of 4.5 million euros. Uh, that's, that's a lot of money, and that really adds quite a bit to the, to the bottom line. So I think that the, co the overall total cost of ownership advantage with StableNet is, is just about unparalleled in the industry. John, I have an, a, a, a tiny comment, if I may, uh, since that customer obviously is a customer uh, in my domain. Just wanted to add, uh, well, actually two, two things. That uh, slide on the left where we have that uh, 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 tinier portion of StableNet uh, on, the, on the pie chart, that is actually that represented uh, phase one. So that was uh, about, I think, nine months um, into the into the project, and uh, so on the right hand side, which is we just 
uh, jumped over phases two, three, and four, which uh, the last one was just uh, implemented a, a couple of months ago. And um, you were right about those uh, systems left. Those are, you know, specific data probes uh, they need to, you know, monitor specific things that are important, uh, trading systems, and so on. Uh, but there is still room for improvement, so we're we're not yet done. I'm pretty sure we're not going to uh, uh, kick out those uh, specific systems that are, you know, tailored for the needs of uh, a, a large bank. But there is still room for improvement, so we might eventually add another slide that shows uh, we have, you know, uh, taken over one or two other systems of those. Yeah, sounds good. Check back with us next year, and it might be a different, uh, different <laughs> yes. eye. <laughs> Hopefully. Hey, Dietmar, really quick, what's the 4.5 million euro conversion to uh, U.S. funds for us uh, folks here in the U.S.? Quickly. Uh, quickly. All right, you caught me. You caught me on the wrong foot. <laughs> This is back pay for 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 the the things I said earlier. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, it comes full yeah. circle. Yeah, no, no, I I can take the heat. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's a larger number even in in, yes, in dollars. Yes, so uh, about six million dollars, I would say. That's outstanding. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, moving right along, uh, we get to the deployment administration uh, criteria, and this encompasses licensing model and manageability, uh, deployment, ease of use slash administration support and services. So uh, according to uh, EMA, uh, StableNet received above average scores uh, in their assessment for overall resource efficiency. Uh, our licensing model allows for greater flexibility and uh, the StableNet databases or and polling engines are embedded but uh, our customers have the option of using their own database or installing PolyNet polling engines, additional ones if they choose. Uh, from a deployment standpoint, uh, Infos and StableNet have one of the best scores for supporting a large number of network devices. So there again, the scalability um, and simplifying uh, the deployment and ongoing management of the project, especially in large deployments. And uh, conversations with our uh, customers confirmed um, that uh, they often use the tool for monitoring non-networking equipment such as uh, software or serv servers rather and additional systems. Um, so here at InfoSum, um, StableNet uh, has or it, uh, historically has offered solutions around the three main areas of, of ENAMs, which is configuration, performance, and fault management. And, and again, as we spoke earlier, um, all of these have been developed by the same team since the inception of uh, InfoSim, and there's been no development through outside acquisition, so it's all organic um, development from the same core team of founders and developers. Um, customers can use uh, all three modules together. Um, synergistically, or they can um, use different pieces of them as, uh, as as they see fit to fit their needs. Um, but you know, essentially, we're helping to consolidate again many tools into one platform, um, simplifying deployment and administration across the entire board, not only through network but also on the system side as well. So you can get a really good picture end to end um, of your entire environment. And again, John, I'll hand it over to you. Now you know you've got some more great examples. Yeah, thanks. I think there's two kind of major points within this criteria, deployment and administration, that are, that are important to think about. Um, one of which is the, uh, the ease of use piece, right? So how, is it, how easy is it to use and monitor? And I think that goes back to what we've touched on a few times in terms of the, the, uh, the fact that we've built this from the ground up uh, with one team. We've never uh, you know, done any acquisitions or been acquired by anybody, and I think the way to look at that is almost from the opposite, right? Consider our competition, especially the big brand names, global names that, that are also in this study uh, that have done a huge number of acquisitions, 30, 40, 50 acquisitions over the same time period that InfoSim has been in existence, and how difficult it is to try and integrate all of those you know, acquisitions into a single platform. It's just impossible. You end up with multiple databases, multiple windows. Um, it's one quote-unquote product, 
but really I have to launch different things. If I want to go into the NetFlow piece, I have to launch the NetFlow piece because it's really separate from the SNMP piece or whatever uh, it may be. So uh, we don't have any of those troubles and it really bears out in using the product in a, in a, in a single, single GUI, single logic kind of thing. And then the second thing that's really important is the flexibility, how we can fit into many different environments. And the example uh, that we're going to be talking about, it's really, it's, it's uh, two different customers and, and how they use the, the same platform, StableNet, but in a, in a deploy it in a really, really different way. The first uh, is a, uh, the large car manufacturer that we mentioned earlier. This is, they're huge, they're global, they've got uh, many, many tens of thousands of devices under management in StableNet, but yet they do that with only 12 agents. So because of the, the scalability of each of our agents, uh, they can handle thousands of devices you know, on a, on a single platform. So they don't really need a lot of systems, they don't really need a lot of servers to handle even that large number of devices. Um, on the other side, we also have a customer, it's a, it's a pan-European retailer, they have you know, sites, many stores, uh, point of sale terminals and things uh, in those stores. For them, it's more important to have a lot of agents, well, more than one agent in each store, one for the sort of store connectivity and then if, even individual agents for their, their point of sale terminals because there's things, there's pieces of critical pieces of information they can only get by directly running one of our client agents on that terminal. Um, so for them, it was important that they could have lots of different agents, that they could have a huge number of them, but all still again in one platform. And they've got 70,000 plus agents um, globally in their, in their store environment, right? So uh, same product, StableNet, but two totally different ways of architecting that solution. And that just speaks to the power of, of how we do things uh, in the platform. And the, the slide that just came up here really talks about the agent architecture in particular. It's something that's really powerful and unique to, to StableNet. Uh, we can offer the agents in uh, our own appliance platforms, like you see on the, on the bottom left here. These are you know, big, powerful servers with lots of cores and memory and hard drive space. But likewise, you could run them on a little uh, single board computer, the, the Pi architecture, if you will, that's been around for, for about a year now and, and is a, a lot of fun to play with, frankly, but also really useful for organizations that need or want to have, you know, just small deployments. Uh, we've, we're talking to telcos that want to put them out at customer sites. We're talking to schools that want to put them in different buildings. Uh, we're talking to banks or financial institutions that may just need one of these small uh, pie type systems in each of their branches, right? So instead of having to pay for a big expensive agent, you can use a very low cost agent but still get the functionality that you need, still have the ability to do the collection, to run the simulation scripts, to do the action and automation uh, capabilities within the product but even in a, in a small footprint. Uh, and we do that uh, uh, while still being able to support various vendors, we're totally vendor agnostic, technology agnostic and, and so forth. Um, and uh, so again, the, 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 the Deployment flexibility, I think, is a key thing to, to take away from uh, thinking about how StableNet can be used, whether you're an enterprise, a service provider, uh, or a school, or a manufacturer, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and the nice thing is uh, that those uh, little um, agent pies, or pie agents, rather, um, they don't cost uh, six million dollars American. <laughs> In fact, you know, those are just a couple hundred euros. So that's a really compelling uh, solution, and we're getting a lot of traction with that as well. Um, on to the next field here, vendor strength. So vendor strength evaluates financial strength, uh, technology partners, and customer satisfaction. And according to EMA, uh, InfoSim, us, uh, we are a privately held firm. Uh, we do claim profitability over the last five fiscal years with continuous growth, and uh, we do have um, some solid technology partners, some of the larger partners that we have uh, currently are Cisco, Oracle, Ixia, and VMware. And um, just to give you a little more background on our history, uh, InfoSim, uh, we've been around for 11 years, and we're in some of the world's largest 
and most complex networks, including some really large telcos and global class enterprises like uh, John has, has gone through already. Uh, we have about 400 or so customers in our portfolio currently. And uh, one thing that we're really proud of is we've actually never lost a customer. So part of our philosophy um, is to become very entrenched uh, with our customers from a relationship perspective. This allows us to be very tact uh, tactical and responsive for any changes that we need to be done or any uh, like feature requests need to be addressed. We can generally turn those around uh, in within a couple of weeks or so. So much more flexible, much more uh, proactive than some of the larger um, competitors that we go against. And uh, it, it's kind of compelling that we've kept those customer relationships for many years. We've built upon the relationship. It's helped the customer and it's helped us build a better product as well. And uh, John, I'll hand that over to you again. I think you got another great example. Yeah, I think uh, that there's sort of two pieces of vendor strength uh, that, are, that are kind of uh, interesting in, in terms of looking at obviously one of them is just you know how big you are what's your sales every year and of course relative to some of the really really large names out there uh, we certainly don't have the multi multi billion dollars of revenue that they do I personally think that's a strength of ours because as Paul mentioned we can uh, you know we can respond more quickly to customer demands and needs uh, than they can I think it's a lot easier for us to be flexible uh, and nimble in the marketplace which is important uh, but the second piece that they really looked at was technology partnerships as a way of determining how strong you are as a vendor. And I, I do think that's a good way to look at it, right? If you, if other people like Cisco and Oracle and the one I'm going to talk about, Ixia, uh, want to be partners with you, I think that says a lot about, you know, the, the name that you're making for yourself in the industry. And, and we certainly uh, score very highly there. Uh, the example we're talking about um, uh, or we'll talk about is, is Ixia. They're a you know, global uh, test systems manufacturer. So they've got, you know, kind of a unique niche in the industry. And, and even within Ixia, they have a particular line they call their network visibility line of products. These are um, packet brokers or uh, uh, there's a lot of different terms for that line of system. But what they needed was a management system to handle their product line, uh, essentially. They have, they the, the way they're, product was designed was that each individual box could be managed on its own, but if you had a lot of their boxes, you needed an umbrella management system. Uh, and instead of really trying to develop their own, they found us and, and uh, determined that because of our capabilities, our functionality, our scalability, our flexibility, all of the things that we've talked about so far, we would be a great partner to, to build that uh, system. Uh, with them, uh, which we've done. They, they uh, call it their global management system and it's available today. So um, I think the fact that we are capable of supporting these large global manufacturers and partnerships really speaks to uh, our capabilities and, uh, and has led us to, um, you know, uh, really this slide, which is our customers. And you can see uh, over our lifetime the breadth and depth of customers that we have. Uh, across a variety of industries. We don't focus anywhere in particular. We do have um, a bit of a telco focus in part of our product. We do have a, a version, if you will, of StableNet that's specific for telco. But other than that, it doesn't matter if you're private sector, banking, healthcare, insurance, manufacturing, retail, education, we support you. Uh, and we've got customer examples, uh, large, well-known brand customer examples in, in all of those. Uh, different areas, and we continue to uh, to grow this slide uh, every day, uh, and we're really proud of our customers, and, and we love our customers, and, and uh, I think that's borne out in, in uh, how successful we've been and will continue to be. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, John, I think we just added uh, Stanford University. Uh, we did. Yeah. We need to get well, that on that slide well, as well. Yeah, we're very, very excited. Great. Well, I think we're coming to close to the end of the presentation. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and scoot on to the next slide here in the summary. So um, the result is uh, if we take how we scored uh, in EMA's radar report, um, it, it goes ahead and it basically architects the following uh, shape, which I think is kind of like a diamond laying on its side, but uh, it's, it scores um, specifically in all five of those fields and kind of connects the lines there. So. 
Um, according to EMA, the Core Technology Stable Net has been architected to support both large enterprises and uh, service provider environments, and this has allowed StableNet to earn very high scores on EMA's architectural measures, while also achieving the highest score in our study in terms of total breadth of features. So that kind of gets back to functionality at the very beginning. Again, something we're very proud of. So um, with an above average rating for resource efficiency as well, the solution finished as the most definitive value leader. So uh, we were awarded that accolade, something that we're very, very proud of, and uh, something that we want to deliver to uh, future customers as well. And here's our product roadmap here, and uh, John, again, I'll turn it over to you and allow you to kind of walk through this. Yeah, speaking of futures, obviously the future we feel is very bright, and part of the reason is because of uh, our continued development. This is not a product that is just resting on uh, our laurels, so to speak. We are moving very rapidly ahead into things like SDN um, and other technologies as they come along. Um, we have a very well-defined roadmap, which is split using the 50-50 uh, rule. So 50% of the time is reserved for the roadmap that we've identified, and the other 50% of our development is uh, responding directly to customer requests. So that sort of nimble capability that we have to very rapidly respond to what our customers want while still looking forward, uh, understanding what's out there, what's coming, uh, that we need to be prepared for. So we're, we're definitely at the forefront of, of uh, supporting new technologies uh, uh, coming down the pike. All right, Dimar, do we have uh, any questions from uh, the audience that we can address? Uh, yes, we do, but uh, before we can get to that, uh, I still owe you a number, and now that I've had some time, four and a half million euros is exactly five million seven hundred twenty-one thousand one hundred forty-five dollars and ninety-three cents. So, you know, very precise. Yeah, well, that's the German way. <laughs> is, that, is that today's uh, currency? Or that is today's currency as of question. five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. You you don't you don't there need you to go. rush to your portfolio. You know, nothing has changed. You're still a rich man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, nonetheless, of course, we had a number of uh, interesting questions. I was uh, while you were having a blast at uh, presenting. I was uh, busy working in the background answering all those questions. Um, there's three of them that I would like to uh, point out so everybody knows about the answer. Um, first of all, the uh, question was about if that EMA report is available, and the answer is yes, of course it is. Uh, we have a, an infosim summary. Um, available on our website. I think we even have a slide that uh, will uh, show the URL um, that will lead you directly to this uh, to this page. Um, can you perhaps advance one more slide? Yes, there it is. Thank you, John. So um, again, it's available uh, on our website as a free download. And um, another question were coming up if the presentation slides of this webinar uh, will be available. And question is, yes, of course they are. I'm just uh, typing my uh, email address um, in the chat. So if you would like to have a copy of those slides, just send me a quick mail. But I'm sure that uh, everybody uh, at InfoSim will help you with that. So if you uh, want to send a mail to Paul or John, uh, doesn't matter, you get uh, those slides in any in any case. And um, we had uh, some more questions around uh, scalability, more detailed questions about uh, licensing and pricing, and uh, I was uh, able to, well, more or less answer all of those, uh, but not in uh, in full detail. So we have a number of web sessions lined up uh, following this webinar in the next couple of days that we will uh, explain and answer all of those questions in one-on-one -on -one sessions. So if you have any other questions, uh, just feel free to type them in the in the chat window and uh, we will get back to you and answer uh, all of those uh, uh, or even do uh, detailed web sessions and webinars on, on uh, topics of your interest. Oh, that's not a problem at all. Then uh, thank you for that new slide. We have a huge resource section on our website. Um, you can find 
probably everything from, from case studies, so product sheets, white paper, solution briefs, and so on. And, uh, of course, also uh, recordings of all the webinars uh, we did in the past. So I guess that um, is it all from my side. Uh, we have uh, extended our time a little bit. So uh, thank you very much, John and Paul, for the uh, presentation. And uh, thank you uh, again, everyone, for, for joining our session today. Um, as I've mentioned uh, in the beginning of our presentation, we have a recording of this webinar. It will be made available to all of you. Um, you get a little email tomorrow to inform you about where to look and where to download it or where to watch it. So again, we'll leave the session open. If you have any more questions for a couple of minutes, then uh, just type them in the in the chat window. And um, that's basically... Um, all from us here at InfoSim. Again, John and Paul, thank you very much for the presentation. Yeah, thanks, Dimar, and uh, thank you to everybody in the audience that attended. All right, well, thank you for joining us, and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. <laughs>